QuickBooks Online 2021 forward contract for speculation that foreign currency will weaken reversing entry. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Online 2021. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online multiple currencies problem three practice file. In prior presentations, we set up the free 30 day trial and then set up the multiple currencies. Now we're going to continue on with our practice problem by first opening up the financial statements, doing that by duplicating tabs, go into the tab up top, right clicking on it, duplicating the tab. Again, go into the tab up top, right clicking on it and duplicating. Go into the reports on the left hand side. We'll start off with the PL, the profit and loss report. The PL will do the date range change up top from 010121 to 123121. Run it and close up the hamburger. Hold down control, scroll up just a bit. Go into the tab to the left. Now opening up the reports on the left hand side. This time the good old BS balance sheet report. Then we'll do the date range change for it up top for 010121 to 123121. And we will run that report, closing up the hamburger. So in prior presentations, we put the forward contract on the books. We did an adjusting entry at the end of the time period. And then we went through closing up the forward contract. And then we were left with this $200. So let's, let's take a look at it in Excel and we'll compare and contrast it to what we have done here. If I go back over to Excel, you'll note that we ended off at the end of the first year with this 3,900 because we needed to have a, a adjusting entry at the end of the period for the payable, which was in foreign currency, the receivable, it, it not is just in US dollars. So no adjustment there. And then if we went down here, we then needed to do an adjustment in order to get the payable to the proper amount before we then uh, paid off the payable. We then took a look at the currency and uh, we traded so that we can have the currency in order to pay off the payable. And then we went down below and this transaction is us actually paying off the accounts payable. So basically these three transactions kind of have to do with us paying off the accounts payable. These two are going to be the primary ones that had to do with us paying off the accounts payable. Now within QuickBooks, when we use the pay bill feature, as we saw in the prior presentation, it will basically create the, the full adjusting entry, meaning it'll take the accounts payable off the books using the current, the, the number that was used when they first put it on the books, the 7,000, uh, the 3,700, and then revalue it using the current exchange rate, which is going to be that 3,850. And the difference between the two is the 150 that QuickBooks will then record automatically. So QuickBooks will do the transaction perfectly for us, except for the fact that this adjusting entry messed us up. And therefore, we're going to do a classic kind of reversing entry type type of system so that instead of just adjusting the difference down here like we did in Excel, we'll do a reversing entry and that'll allow us to use the pay bill feature that will kind of make everything work work out in that format. So we did it in a little bit. We did the reversing entry process a little bit reversed here in that on the accounts payable, if we go into the accounts payable here, if I then change the date so it goes back to 2020 to 2021 and run this report. So we put this on the books at uh, at the 3007. And then we did the journal entry at the end of the time period to bring it up to that 39. So it's proper at the end of the time period for our cutoff date. And then we did the we did the pay bill feature and that that recorded it in the same amount as the as the original bill, because that's what the pay bill does. And then we we were left with just the 200 remaining here. Now, in order for this to work out nicely, we could have reversed the $200 on the accounts payable side. And then when we use the pay bill feature, we could just do the same pay bill feature and it'll it'll net itself out uh, nicely. On the income statement side of things, if I go back to the balance sheet and go to the income statement, we now have the 150 in income, uh, which which again is not quite right because in year two, that would be for the full amount. We, we need the, the income of 50 rather than the loss of the 150, which would be for the two year time period. So now we're going to do the reversing entry and it should kind of fix that. We should bring this back up, up to 50. And so that's what our process will be. Remember the reversing entry would probably be done before we had the pay bill feature in practice. So we kind of, we're kind of backing into it here. So I'm going to do the reversing entry. We're going to hit the plus button and let's just do a journal entry to do it. So a journal entry for the reversing entry. We're going to keep that. I'll just keep it in the US dollars. We're going to reverse it typically the first day. Let's see if I can get the date right this time. 010121. 
first day of the second year that we're going to be doing we're going to reverse our adjusting entry exactly so this was our adjusting entry we're simply going to reverse it now so that means the account the foreign currency loss will be a credit let's say exchange gain loss will be credit for 200 and then we're going to say the debit is going to be for what what did i call it the accounts payable accounts payable account for the peso yes and so there we have it and this is going to be the reversing entry reversing entry and i'll put that on both sides here reversing reversing entry entry now this is an accounts payable account so it needs a name so i'm going to put broker our our name here that's going to be our vendor that has to happen because we used an accounts payable account it will be affecting then the sub ledger of the accounts payable now we shouldn't have an impact on the exchange uh, right here it shouldn't it shouldn't uh, cause us any problem we could just simply make it one for this transaction but it shouldn't have an impact on our transaction down below so that looks good let's save it and close it save it and close it and then go back to our balance sheet and then run this report i'm going to hold down control scroll up just a bit and that should take then our payable back down to zero so there's our accounts payable if i go into it then and i change the date i'm going to bring this back to 2020 and run it and hold down control scroll down just a bit so now we have the bill that was on place then the adjusting entry and then we reversed it as of the first day of the next year and then if we imagine recording the bill afterwards Notice the accounting department could simply record the bill as they normally would, which would bring it back down to zero, which is what we would expect it to be after that point in time. If I then go back on over the, the other side, if I go to the income statement, income statement, hold down control, scroll up just a bit. We now have, let's run it, run the report. We now have the 150. Now it made two accounts because when, when I use the exchange account, it creates an account automatically. It has the same name. So I could I could net these two accounts together and put them in the one the one account because QuickBooks made one of these accounts uh, and it wasn't it wasn't set up until we actually had a transaction that had the foreign currency in it. That's why we had to set up the other one manually. But the net between the two is the fifty dollars. So there's the fifty dollars. That's what we wanted it to be. So you can see how the reversing entry kind of nets itself out at the end of the day to give us that the proper amount. So that's going to be this side of things. Now, because we use the accounts payable, I'm going to open up one more tab, right? Click it on this tab up top, duplicating again. We do have some kind of uh, issues with the sub ledger that you have to be careful of because we had adjusting entries in that sub ledger. So if I go to the reports down below and we look at the accounts payable, this is who we owe reports, sales reports, uh, expense and vendors. We're going to say we have the who we owe I, I just went past it it's going to be the vendor balance detail let's do the vendor balance detail close up the hamburger and that looks good so now in this item we don't owe any anything at this point in time but these two are kind of an issue because they went in and out of this ledger and that can cause that can cause kind of some problems we kind of want to net those two out so that uh, so they don't cause any problems so just realize you got that kind of issue when you're using the sub ledger and you're entering adjusting entries and reversing entries to it you could avoid that by entering the adjusting and reversing entries into another account so in other words if i hit i'm going to customize this report and then i want to say that uh, let's take a look at the filters down below and i'm going to say that i want to see not just the ones that are unpaid but all all the transactions so i'm going to run that and say some of the filters you have applied are invalid okay and then i'll select the vendor all vendors okay let's try it again so now we have the whole the whole thing for this one vendor that we have right we put it on the books at the 3007 and then we paid it with that uh 3007 but these two journal entries are kind of messing up messing things up here in the middle they, they net each other out but they it can add a little bit of confusion over here so that's going to be it let's go a bit let's go into our trial balance now and take a look at a trusty trial balance hitting the the hamburger reports on down below type it in the trusty trial balance good old uh, trial balance and let's 
do our date range change for the second year this time. 010121 to 123121. Run it. Close up the hamburger. Hold down control. We're at that 125%. So we have the 99850. Uh, 99850 is it? Let's check it out. Comparing it to Excel, 99850. And then we got the 99800 and the 50 down below, right? We got the 998 and then the 50, which is netting out. So these two net out to that 50. So that looks good. Looks like it ties out to what we have in Excel. So I'll print out the trial balances so you can use those to check your works if you so choose.